Hello everyone, I'm Alison Schwabi and very pleased to be with you to talk a little about my quilt abstract landscape textures that's currently in the Quilt National 23 collection. A little about my background is that I'm Australian, I live in Uruguay at the moment and I'm one of those Australian girls who was born in the early years after the Second World War and part of my education was the practical needle art, sewing, dressmaking, knitting and crochet with a bit of embroidery. My grandmother and my mother were both very good at that so there was encouragement at home but we also learned those things at school and dressmaking classes lasted right up until mid-secondary school. And those of us with academic potential were uh, steered into those subjects. Eventually I went to university and one of the subjects I majored in was geography. I particularly liked physical geography and geomorphology, the study of landforms and the processes of erosion and deposition that structure them and make them into the identifiable forms around us. After university, university, I married an exploration geologist whose work took us into various mining towns around Outback Australia and a couple of mining camps. Typical of all these places is that vegetation is sparse, semi-desert areas usually, thin vegetation which makes you very aware of the shapes of landscape around you. His job also took us to Denver, Colorado in the late 80s where I came across a traditional a geometric patchwork and quilting and I made one traditional quilt before I began to make quilted fabric art of my own design. Fast forward to uh, the year 2000, I came to live in Uruguay. In Uruguay I found that the quilt shops stocking the lovely cotton fabrics that I was used to working and, and accessing pretty well whenever I wanted to are not a thing here. In fact, cotton fabric is very hard to locate in Uruguay. And um, I had dismal mail order experiences. One shipment didn't turn up. Uh, a couple of others I had to pay custom, quite serious customs fees for. So I abandoned that approach and only bought fabric when I was traveling outside the country. At the same time, I looked at and became aware of the potential of other fabrics that I could be creative with in fibre art. One rule has always been that I have to love a fabric when, before I buy it. If I don't love it, I know I won't use it and so there's no point in buying it. I no longer really remember why I used the soft golden nylon polyester organza that I used for the shapes on black in this quilt. But I must have wanted it for some uh, project that I was steered away from at the time, never mind. When I came to audition the fabrics to be used for the one I had in mind, uh, it, it was the one I chose. And there is a diagram, there's a photo of those uh, auditioning uh, pieces of fabric and it's the one on the right. In the past 10 years, hand stitch has become a lot uh, more important in my art quilts, not, a, not only the function of holding several layers of fabric together, but also as a decorative element in its own right. It's part of my surface decoration. Um, when I planned this quilt, uh, I did what I customarily do, that is, I started with a diagram. From pre-computed days in uh, geography, for example, I had to illustrate papers um, with hand-drawn diagrams. So to this day, um, I problem solve or illustrate a point drawing a diagram. And that's how I started with abstract landscape textures. You'll see the picture of the diagram probably right now. And you notice that the lines head out towards the right-hand side of the page, but I just don't get there. The diagram is about five or by seven inches, something of that dimension, and it was used solely to um, think about what I knew would be a very horizontal work that is very wide and not terribly deep, and it would be very landscape. Either lines on it, which I drew in in pencil there, just some lines dividing up that section in several ways, and the arcs. Uh, and the rounded top shapes, which are a rather childlike way of uh, representing mountains or hills, 
uh, we see such representations in some cave art and um, very primitive art uh, on uh, rock walls and so on. And these little symbols represent hills or mountains. Um, I call them primal shapes because they are the circles and arcs on my work as well as uh, bundles of lines. They are shapes that um, even a child will eventually work its way towards if you put a crayon or something and some paper in front of a child they will draw some of these shapes as part of whatever they're telling you about what they're drawing so they're primal shapes to me the other thing that was on my mind as I made this quilt was the road cuttings and railway cuttings that was, we've all been through where we can see the signs of engineers having cut down through the top layers of uh, the earth's surface to reveal different layers uh, of stuff underneath uh, maybe solid rock maybe different kinds of um, uh, deep deposited material gravels and sands and so on in layers as they've been deposited and we've all seen those cuttings which make the gradient much easier for whatever vehicle is traveling through so um, a little bit more about my process is that I uh, machine basted the the lines and um, and the hills on with uh, zigzag basting which of course was removed as I hand stitched the edges of each shape. I've also included a photo of the close-up of uh, quilting in process and um, Really, that's about all I can say about the quilt. So it, it is part of a series. Someone asked me, was it part of a series? And yes, it is, because for the last 50 years that I've been making uh, fibre art, uh, fabric art with uh, fabric and thread, much of it, most of it, has been inspired in some way or other by landscape shapes, colours, textures, lines, and this one's no exception. The other thing I'm uh, very inspired by in my art is the, the primal shapes are referred to, not the exact squares uh, or grids. Yes, I do use grids, but it's the shapes that I like to explore too. So um, thank you for your time and attention. Email me uh, if you have any questions in particular about my work. And I'd like to say congratulations to my fellow exhibitors this year. And a big thank you to the Dairy Barn Arts Centre for making this opportunity possible. Cheers.